Hi, it's Paul Anderson and I wanted to announce and explain a set of videos and resources that I'm releasing. Um, it's on conceptual thinking or system thinking. I'm going to release 15 videos today and it'll grow to around eventually 50. Um, why am I doing this? Uh, this project started way back in the spring before the pandemic. I was visiting a school and I found that conceptual thinking in a kindergarten class and in a biology class around something like cause and effect was at about the same level. So no one's teaching them how to think about cause and effect and apply it to the science throughout that whole period of time. And so I started using a mini lesson. A mini lesson comes from elementary, especially literacy, and it's essentially a five to 10 minute lesson to teach a concept. Um, I started using concrete manipulatives so that we can learn at a concrete level what something like cause and effect is, and then we can apply it to the science that we're doing. And so I've been working on this all summer and into the fall. So for each of the concepts, I've come up with one object. So like for systems, there's going to be a boundary and components in the system, and we dig into how the system works together or structure and function. We can get a concrete understanding of the structure and the function and then how those two things fit together. Um, with each of these mini lessons, I will um, start with, by unpacking, I'm calling it a thinking box. And so this would be like cause and effect level one. Within each of the box in the video, I'll talk about the object that represents the concept. So this green arrow represents cause and effect. I then identify the different concepts like cause and effect and how they're related to each other. And then I use some magnetic, I call them thinking blocks. They're based on uh, Derek Cabrera's think blocks. And so you can write on them and I can say, what's the cause, what's the effect, and then what's the relationship between the cause and the effect. As I do the mini lessons, I'll start with a concrete representation. And so an object like gears is a good place to start with cause and effect. So the movement of this gear leads to the effect of the other gear moving. So as I start the video, it'll be me thinking about um, cause and effect. Um, about halfway through, I'll switch to another object. So maybe dominoes falling over and what's the cause and what's the effect. After I'm done with the video, then there's a Google slide deck with two other objects, one concrete and then one science. And the idea is that teachers and students can show their thinking on that. And so um, the reason I wanted to put together this video is to explain that. Like these videos are for teachers so they can understand the concepts and eventually deliver mini lessons like this to their students. But I've found that like it becomes really valuable to students and parents and it, just anybody out there to start thinking this way. As I've started to think conceptually, I see the world in a different way. So I'm, I'm not done yet. These pro this project is going to roll from the spring and into the summer, but I would encourage you to watch the video, try to use the Google Slides to show your thinking, and then try it with your students. Um, like any of the things I think in, in, in the internet, you can think you're learning by watching a video like this, but you don't really learn until you try it, until you look at some new phenomena or something and identify what's the effect, what's the cause. So for example, in a biology class, I think mechanism is the most important thing that we could teach our students. How do we go from cause to mechanism to, to effect? Um, even though your biology students probably need to do level three, four, and five in these lessons, you might have to start them with level one because a lot of us, if we haven't thought this way, really have to begin in the beginning. Um, so I wanted to also acknowledge some help. Um, so Lauren Bowers is a teacher from Dubai who helped me this summer plan out like what would be the title of all these lessons and what's gonna be in the lesson itself. I've also got help from other teachers like um, Glenn Cochran and Helen Pashley. The most help I've got has been from my wife, Laura, who's had to deal with like just me thinking about this all the time and developing a bunch of objects and out in the garage trying to build a new thing. With each of these, I built some concrete examples, but I'm trying to use things you would normally have in a school or in your house so you can understand it. This is nothing new. Um, using concrete manipulatives goes back to Friedrich Froebel and Maria Montessori years ago, and the idea of mini lessons is not new, but I think applying it to the abstract science that we're trying to learn is really, really important. When we ask students to think uh, system thinking, around a phenomena that also has the complexity of the science, I think it's really, really tough. And, and we really need those concrete examples to get started. So I encourage you to watch the videos, play with the videos. I'd love feedback as always, uh, and I hope that's helpful.